I recently read Influence by Robert Cialdini. Imagine getting a knock on your front door. You open the door and see a man in a nicely tailored suit with a vacuum. He greets you with a cheerful voice and says, Hi, my name's Rick. I'm a senior sales associate at Vacuum Plus. He hands you his business card and says, It's about to rain. Could I come in for a minute and tell you why this vacuum could be the last vacuum you'll ever need? Let's say the pandemic has ended, so you comply with his request. When he steps inside, he compliments you on your choice of artwork and mentions that he has a similar painting of a mountain range on his wall at his home. After some friendly chit-chat about artwork, he shows you the vacuum he's selling and mentions that three of your neighbors have recently bought one from him. Then he shows you a few special features on the vacuum and offers to leave the vacuum with you for the weekend so you can try it out, along with a care package of free cleaning supplies. When he returns on Monday, he informs you that he's sold all his vacuum units over the weekend, and the vacuum you're sampling is the last unit he has in stock. A few days ago, you didn't think about getting a vacuum, but now you're pulling your credit card out about to buy one. What happened? Author and psychologist Robert Cialdini often found himself in similar situations, being persuaded to buy products he didn't need, but suddenly wanted. To understand how he was so easily persuaded, he researched all the latest science on influence and discovered six powerful persuasion tactics that salespeople and fundraisers use to get you to purchase their products and donate to their causes. To help make these six powerful persuasion tactics easy to remember, I've used a few synonyms to replace Cialdini's terms and form the acronym SALE. The first S stands for scarcity. Robert Cialdini teaches the six principles of persuasion to students at Arizona State University. At the end of one of his classes, a student who owned a beef supply company informed Cialdini that he had tested the persuasion principle of scarcity and got shocking results. The student had given his sales staff two scripts. The first script included the standard sales presentation. The second script included the standard sales presentation, but then they told the customers that a beef shortage is coming and very few people know about it. How many more sales do you think the second script led to? 50% more? 100% more? When the sales were tallied, the beef importing company made six times more sales using the scarcity script. Effective businesses and salespeople leverage the persuasive power of scarcity by convincing customers they might lose their chance to buy something valuable. Airlines and Amazon deploy scarcity by using red lettering to indicate how few seats are left on the flight and how few products are in stock, respectively. They also show countdown timers at checkout so that you rush to secure your seat or secure your shipping date. The second S in sale is social proof. When researchers at Columbia University put a subject in a room to complete a task and then gradually filled the room with smoke, the lone subjects reported the smoke 75% of the time. But when the subjects were joined by two actors who were instructed to not respond to the smoke, only 10% of the subjects reported the smoke. When we are uncertain, we look to others to decide how to act. When we're uncertain about a purchase, we look to others to decide to buy or not. This is why door-to-door -door salespeople are quick to reference the neighbors' names, and it's why retailers go out of their way to display ratings and reviews for products. Last year, I went to the brick-and-mortar Amazon bookstore in New York City and saw that they went to great lengths to print out a label for each book on display that included the number of ratings for the book and a quote from an online reviewer. The A in sale is authority. Several years ago, a researcher in the Midwest called 21 nursing stations and asked each nurse to administer an unapproved drug at near lethal doses to a specific patient in their hospital. The nurses didn't know the man, but the man said he was a doctor. 95% of the nurses complied. Luckily, someone intervened and stopped the nurses before they could inject the drug into the patient. As kids, we learn to comply with authority figures, like parents and teachers, because they know more than we do. As we get older, we maintain our willingness to comply with authority. Effective salespeople are well aware of this, and that's why they try to use impressive sounding titles like senior sales associate and flash high status symbols like luxury cars to imply authority and make us more likely to comply with their requests. By far the most commonly used sign of authority is the business suit. A social experiment in Texas found that when a man wears a freshly pressed business suit and tie, 
people are three times more likely to illegally cross the street with that man than if he wears a simple work shirt and trousers. The L in sale stands for liking. A power suit might leverage the persuasive power of authority, but an equally powerful way to influence someone is to dress like them. In 1970, a psychologist went around a college campus to ask people for a dime to make a phone call. The psychologist initially dressed in straight attire and then dressed like a hippie. When he asked students whose clothing matched his clothing, those students were 20% more likely to give him a dime than if their clothing differed. Countless studies show that we are significantly more likely to say yes to requests from people who seem like us. This is why Cialdini says car salesmen will examine a prospect's trade-in vehicle, looking for things that they can relate to. If there's camping gear in the trunk, the salesman might mention later on how he loves to get away from the city whenever he can. If there are golf balls in the back seat, he might remark that he hopes the rain holds off until he can play the 18 holes he has scheduled later that day. If he notices that the car was purchased out of state, he might ask where the customer is from and report with surprise that he or his wife was born there. Whenever a salesperson is trying to convince you that he or she is just like you, they're trying to get you to like them because the more you like them, the more likely you are to say yes to what they have to offer. The first E in sale is escalating commitments. If someone asks you to watch their stuff at a coffee shop, you will be up to five times more likely, according to the science, to put yourself in harm's way and run after a potential thief simply because you want to be consistent with your prior commitment. Being consistent with our commitments is generally a good rule. If we're not consistent with what we say or do, people can't trust us. Salespeople leverage our innate need for consistency by getting us to make a small initial commitment, which then escalates to a big sale. Many recurring membership sites will ask us to pay just $1 to join their membership for the first month because they know that we are significantly more likely to pay the $39 per month in subsequent months. People who sell online courses will often ask us to attend a webinar because they know that if we commit 30 minutes to the webinar, we will be far more likely to pay the $5.99 for the course than if they simply told us the price at the beginning. And the last E in sale stands for exchange. The first time I walked through a Costco, I was shocked to see how many sample tables they had. I could walk through the store and have an entire meal for free. It seemed extremely generous. But as I found out over the years, it made me extremely generous with my money when shopping at Costco. Costco sample tables leverage the power of reciprocation, or what I've renamed exchange to fit the sale acronym. When we receive something of value, we feel morally obligated to return the favor in some way. If you bring your car into a dealership to get it repaired, and that dealership gives you a nice loaner for the weekend, you will be far more likely to return the favor by buying your next car at that dealership. In the end, when you're considering using one of the six persuasive sales tools, apply the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If thousands of people use and love your product, ask them to rate it and write a review. This form of social proof has helped you make better purchases in the past, so why not use it to help your customers? Use the six tools of persuasion to nudge your customers closer to a decision that you know will be good for them, but always give them an easy way out. That was the core message that I gathered from Influence by Robert Cialdini. I finally understand why so many entrepreneurs and salespeople recommend this book. I highly recommend it too. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.